followers um our dear beloved ones ah muta page we chia e wo su e wa ni we thank you so much we thank you so much we thank you so much for go at be the spring being the mother of the universe from from the mind na on shram na on ma the bia ya ya bia ya na on ma e ngo so e ma ya cha cha mo nyina ye shia bi um efa the teachings no when the realities of life are uncovered change is a must ye di kai e ye video concerning how matter came to be ya ka mo asem i i i i believe you enjoyed it i believe you enjoyed it ya ka mo asem briefly briefly ya fa one side of story na and make it sense a crown because in Cairo or in Cairo and Shada and make it sense a dear can me and make it sense a crown edimao the way a marker came to be. So today we're going to continue from that portion and we say, Baby, I had an eye and we can say, Try but now, or more G key no fee bun shrine key no fee bunny do seven. Try bono ye fro mo ko za a e no mu leader no ye ko sai ko sai yi no e ye one eh leader e na ni tribe ko za a no ye one of the clans of Quraysh and we said who are Quraysh Quraysh no o mo ye hwan o mo na ye ba be discuss e o ma sem sesi a so this video is about is about Quraysh and maybe something a little about great grandfather of Prophet Muhammad, who is known as Abu Manaf. Hello. I believe you have so many Manafs around, right? We're gonna explain the meaning of the name for you today. What is Manaf? <laughs> you really enjoy it. Now, when Hussein took the key by force or by trick, they became the leaders of the the town called Maka, which is named after the deity, the goddess of Banu Jurum. They became the leaders, the owners of the town. Oma Belidi, Omo Oma Fa, Oma Jukuruna Fa. But Kusei Wei, any Nikuresh clans, Omo Ye Patriarchal clans, Omo Omo Respect. Omu bi biya ni omu buo ni na ekoma bema. Omu ye patriarchal clans. Unlike the banu ujuru hum. Banu ujuru hum. Omu ye matriarchal. Niti no. That is why the goddess. Their deity is a goddess. It's a female energy. Ena omu di echichiri omu kuro makano. Niti. Banu ujuru humu no, seye kano ewo, yeye kase mune, the way we put it na. We will simple put it that, Banu ujuru humu, e di omu deiti, goddess no, a e venus no, e na omu di achichere, maka kuonu, e na omu di goddess ni di, e di atu, e di atu kuonu tu. So, because of Kosa, a omu ye one of the clans of Quraysh, omu omu ye patriarcha ante no, the system of having a goddess alone because the idea born with you on this sea yeah uh this sea shrine that is kaba shrine the idea was that they build a shrine for the female deity born with you build a shrine for the female deity and they carve a stone of of a female deity representing the almaka deity now these people are patriarchal. The Huza are, which is the one of the clans of Quraysh, they are patriarchal. Omu di omu bi biya ebema 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 ebema. Oba eni ni na so biya. So for that reason, they wanted to take over. And omu take you over. And omu mu create omu deity. Ah, eh ye 
male energy. And Jehoshua created a deity which is a male energy, which is contrary to the beliefs of Ban Ujurum, who believes in female deities. So Hosea created Hubal. So Hubal no ah oye bema Hubal ah omo create a oye bema Hosea afu create yano. Eno omo de eno edia koka ba mu inside. Initially, it was the Almaka deity statue. Eno ewo eno ewo kaba building mu shine. But when Hosea took over. They make their own deity because they are patriarch, patriarch, patriarchal oriented. So they made a patriarch deity. They made a, a male deity and placed it in the middle of the Kaaba. And then they took the female one out. When you put the pieces together, this is what happened. So they took the female one out, which is the, 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 the statue of al -Makar. They took it out and crashed it because they don't go with the, 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 the system of feminine energy. So when they crash it, they, because it is the energy that used to establish the town, they don't want to take it out totally. And now almost the stones, meteorite, and I take it out, and I see the meteorite, and I volcanic rocks, and I want carbon, and I almost the creative what you call black stone today and in the shape of vava that is the, uh, the technical name vava which represents or bar asset where life comes from and the mumu omu ye the ma e ibonu juru mum omu deity no ah your friend al maka na oya oba no and omu the black stone no akavi omu or baby be alive a fever e wo oba mu e no mu de no a represent e no mu de o mu google na ko she ka ba dan nu mu e no mu de oba mu we no e da be to anu e no mu afu di na face sunrise this is what happened so the black stone represents the almaka deity the female deity of god ujurum because the Hosea I don't want to do away with it totally. Who to me to know each other? Who to know each other? Because I don't know the attitude of people. So who person who to know one of whom to obey? As I say, we are the original two. But because they don't, they don't believe in matriarchal systems. They don't want to have the statue of a woman. So what they did was that they took it out. And on Monday, black stone are creating candles, any perfumes. So they are creating the down. The vava, the vava, eh, yeah, eh, represent Obama, eh, no more they black stone. So this is what happened. Now, the idea, na omu di bo omu brasa time, no, eh, the idea of Trinity, eh, the idea of Trinity, eh, the idea of Trinity, eh, no omu di bo omu brasa because the Trinity is very important, which we will discuss later. The eh, idea of Trinity. So, kusa a, omu di kusa i edi. Your friend is saying, or the Google, and they are to carbon more on my creative way, vava shape, black stone, and they are to a volcano. Then they feel like, who say, feel like the Trinity is not complete. So he went to Syria, who say, the leader of the tribe, the clan Kuza, went to Syria. On, on his way back, he brought another two deities to come and add them to the Hubal in the Kaaba. And all those deities are two deities which are female ones. So he brought Al Uza and brought Al Manat. I hope you remember these names because when we were discussing the mediums of Arabs, they are in the Quran. So he brought the, he brought the two Al Manat and Al Uza. He brought the two. And come and place them in the Kaaba, making the three. So the idea of Horus, Isis, Osiris, the Trinity. That is how the the spiritual way of people at that time. That is how they run their, their spirituality. The Trinity, which represents the 
three angles of the pyramid. You see, for the menu account. Now, the Uza and the Manat, all of them, all the two are female deities. They are goddesses. And he brought them to act to women. So they became three in the shrine, in the Kaaba building. They became three in the shrine. So Hubal at the middle with a male form, a male statue, Hubal, and then Uza and Manat are the other side of it. So this is what Hussein did. Now let's come to the tribe Quraysh. What is the meaning of Quraysh? <laughs> There are so many accounts explaining the meaning of Quraysh. The simple meaning you will find when you go to Google or when you go to check it out somewhere on the internet. The simple meaning you have is that Quraysh means the one who guides or the one who searches. Obia oka bibi boom ana obia oko shushe bibi. That is, these two meanings are the simple and common meanings that anytime you check the meaning of Quraysh, you will come across. Um, the spellings of Quraysh in English, sometimes it is spelled with Q-U-R-A-Y-S-H, Quraysh, sometimes with K. So, that's how it is spelled. But, Apart from the simple and common meaning that you'll be given when you go to Google it, there is other meanings. The simple meaning is the one who searches and, that, and also the one who gathers. That is the simple meaning of Quraysh. But it goes beyond that. Now let's check in the book of Sirat al-Nabawiyah as Sirat al-Nabawiyah the book of Ibn Hisham, which he claimed he preached from uh, Ibn Ishaq. Now, in that, this is the book, volume 1. Now, there is two opinions about the meaning of Quraysh here. Now, one opinion is for Ibn Hisham, the author of this particular book. The second opinion is for the author of the oldest Sira book, which is Ibn Ishaq. Now, both of them have two different meanings for the word Quraysh. Now, let me go to the book and read it and explain it, and then I'll come back to tell you something about the information in this Asira to Nabawiya book, which belongs to Ibn Ishaq. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Now, this is it. First meaning, uh, and this meaning is coming from Ibn Hisham himself, the author of the book, Asira to Nabawiya. He says, when you go to page 144, that is if your own, that's volume 1, Asira to Nabawiya volume 1, if yours is the same with mine, uh, page 144, this is what he says. He said, Ishtika Quraysh, meaning the origin of the meaning of the word Quraysh. This is what Ibn, uh, Ibn Hisham says. He says, Wa inna ma sumiyat Quraysh, Quraysh-an min atakawush, or see, yefra Quraysh, Quraysh, tribe Quraysh, yefra mu Quraysh, because because of Takarush. What is Takarush? Takarush is Atijara to Wal Iktisab. Atijara means trade. Al Iktisab means together, together money, to make money, making money, making money through trade. Atijara means to, to, to trade. And Al Iktisab means to gather money or to make money. So when you put the two together, according to Ibn Hisham, Quraysh are named after what they are good in doing. That is trade. Trade. So they make money out of trade. 
They are not good in anything. They are good in trade. So Atijara walikti sab. So he says, wa inna ma sumiyat Quraysh. Quraysan mina takarush. They call Quraysh Quraysh because of takarush, meaning to gather, to trade and make money, to trade and gather money, to trade and become rich. This is the idea of Ibn Hisham himself in his book Asiratun Nabawiya. But that so this is the meaning number one. But the second meaning in the book is as the way Ibn Hisham himself put it. That one belongs to Ibn Ishaq, the author of the oldest sirah, the authors of the oldest book of Islamic history, Ibn Ishaq. And it's called Ibn Ishaq. Now, Ibn Hisham is quoting Ibn Ishaq. It's a call of Ibn Ishaq. Ibn Ishaq said, In number summia Quraishu, Quraishan litajamu'iha, mimbadi tafarukiha. He says, Quraish were not called Quraish, except that they put themselves together after they were scattered. So, according to Ibn Ishaq, Quraish means to come together after being scattered, to unite after being divided, to come back as one after being separated, according to Ibn Ishaq. So in, 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 the, in, in, in the meaning of Quraysh, Ibn Ishaq and Ibn Hisham, they differ. <coughs> Excuse me. They differ in the meaning. So right now, the problem is this. When you put the information in the book of Asira to Nabawiya together, you're going to find the information being true. One of the information is that Ibn Hisham claims that he's speaking his information from Ibn Ishaq, the first author of biography of Prophet Muhammad. But at the same time too, he has another information there that differ from what Ibn Ishaq said in his book. Or was our information to be a war? A yes, Runku, any near Ibn Ishaq Eka. Now, send me a copy of Ibn Ishaq and of Ibn Ishaq war. Then Ibn Ishaq becomes his reference. But near now, one Kasan Kasan Eka, a differ from near Ibn Ishaq Eka. And only a different from near Ibn Ishaq Eka. Now, the question is on ya and on one hand. So, Ibn Hisham has two informations in his book, Asira to Nabawiya. One, he picked it from Ibn Ishaq, who is the first author of Sira book, or the biography of Prophet Muhammad. But the second information he had, which he didn't pick from Ibn Ishaq, we don't know where he got that information from, because one my reference. One my reference. But you allow this book outside there, you never call Ibn, Is Ibn Hisham about about the information he brought, you no know, one can say he's lying. You never had problem with him. But when people quote him to mention, you call those people liars. Many more on social media. So, so this is it. So when I hear two meanings, you know, the first meaning of Quraysh, which Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Hisham gave, was that Quraysh were named Quraysh for. Mina Takarush, what Takarush Atijara wal Iktisab. At Takarush is to make money out of trade. So because they love to trade, that is why they are called Quraysh. Now the question is, who named them that name? One one idea in the mouth. Say Omuja Dient Ena yet to Omudin Quraysh and what Jad be mwa. One edi sadin to omu. And we are question number one. Question number two. Are they the only Bedouins or are they the only village desert Arabs that trade? If the name is for traders, then all the remaining clans and tribes in the Arabian Peninsula should be called Quraysh as well because they also trade. So this meaning, this meaning of Quraysh doesn't work. And then the second one, and no, see, now I'm assuming it's courage, courage, and later Jamu in her, but that's a for working her. Or see, and only from courage because they united after they were they were separated. So this is the second meaning of the courage to be united after 
you being divided, to be to come together after you've been separated, to come together after you've been scattered. So this one makes sense a little bit more than the meaning that's the meaning Ibn Isham is mentioning. That is to be uh to, 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 to make money out of trade. To make money out of trade. So in this book, Asira to Nabawiya, this is the two meanings of the name Quraysh. Okay. There is the one that is more authentic, somehow more authentic. That is, the name Quraysh means shark. And this one sounds more authentic because in the ancient Arabs, there's a tribe that has their emblem, um, Franca, um, flag, which they have shark on it. They have shark on the flag. And this Arabian tribe that has this flag with shark on it, this Quraysh tribe are descendants. When you follow the background, you will see that they are descendants of this tribe with the flag which has the image of shark on it through a great 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 grandfather who is known as Paha or Fihim. So if this if we were to pick this then Quraysh means shark. So this is the three meanings that we are going to give for you. We are going to give you about Quraysh. So when I hear meanings Mensa. Okay. Now, the Quraysh tribe is made up of individual clans. Is made up of individual clans. Quraysh tribe is made up of individual clans. And clans, no, no, omu, omu related, omu lineage or omu lineage to omu papa because they are patriarchs. Now, individuals now are making up Quraysh tribe. Omu ye baku baku 25. The Quraysh tribe is made up of 25 clans. It is made up of 25 clans. Or, in other words, it is 25 clans that formed the tribe Quraysh. And these 25 clans that form the tribe of Quraysh are divided into two. They are divided into two. We have those that are known as Quraysh Al-Wawahir. Now, this Quraysh Al-Wawahir is in English, it simply means that the outer Quraysh they are the Quraysh clans which settled at the periphery of the Maka town, outskirts of the Maka town. They are known as Quraysh Zawad, the outer Quraysh. They are not in the valley. You know, Maka is valley, is in the valley. So the other clans of Quraysh that are outside Maka are known as Quraysh Zawad. And then the second or the last group is also known as Quraysh al Bapai, meaning the Valley Quraysh, the Quraysh that are in Valley. They are those that settled closer to the shrine and also closer to the well Zamzam. One day we will discuss Zamzam. Zamzam story is fairy tale. The story about Zamzam being popped out from the feet of Ishmael when Hagar was running around looking for water is a fairy tale. The reality of Zamzam will come your way one day. So, so they settle closer to the wall Zamzam and then closer to the shrine and these are called Quraysh al -Babai. So they are the valley Quraysh and those that are outside the uh, town Makkah are the Quraysh of Hawaii. Now, these 25 clans who formed 
the Quraysh tribe, some of them are something like Bab Muhari. You will see that most of them has the word Banu on them. Banu, Banu, Banu. The word Banu is coming from Ibn. Ibn is one and Banu is plural. Ibn means son or child. Ibn means son or child. And the opposite one is Bint. Bint means daughter. So, this name Bintu, Bintu, Bintu that we have in our communities, is not a name. Bintu means daughter. So, any other lady outside there is a daughter to her mother and her father. So, in Arabic, she's Bintu, a daughter. So, Bintu is not a name. But, Islamically, when they call someone Bintu, mostly, mostly, it um it 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 it's a symbol of a name that is hidden. So they prefer to call that name that bintu and leave the name. And anytime you hear bintu Islamically, it is referring to Fatima. Because the prophet daughter Fatima is Fatima to Bintu Rasul. Fatima to Bintu Rasul is Fatima, the daughter of Prophet Muhammad. So when they name people in our community Fatima, some people resort to call her Bintu because of Fatima to Bintu. So, so most Bintus in our community are Fatimas. But the, when the, the word Bintu means daughter. The word Bintu means daughter and Ibn means son. So the plural of Ibn is Abna, sons. And Banu is also sons. Or children. That is why the Jews are called Banu Israel, the children of Israel. Banu means children. So this class, 25 clans that made or that formed the Quraysh tribe, are uh, some are Banu Hari, Banu Abi, Banu Tamim, which means Banu Hari means children of Haris. So it means their great great grandfather is Hari. Banu Tamim, children of Banu Tamim or the descendant of Tamim, and that is how it is, including Banu Hashim and Banu Umayya. All these people are meant to be the same tribe. They are part of people who formed Quraysh. The interesting point is thus in the year 580, 580 AD to 590 AD, the Quraysh tribe were on each other's neck for supremacy. Because of Ahimye, any Akandye, everybody want to lead. Everybody want to have a position in Mecca to be the leader in Mecca because the town has settled, business is going on, and they have they have four major places they trade. Four major places they trade. They trade in Yemen, they trade in Persia. Persia is Iran today. They trade in Persia, they trade in Ethiopia, and they trade in I think Palestine as well. So these people were fighting among themselves in the year 580 to 590. They were on each other's neck. And the frontliners of the fight is the Banu Abdul Shams, the children of Abdul Shams, and Banu Hashim, and the children of Hashim. Now, Banu Abdul Shams and Banu Hashim, they are, they, both of them are children and descendant of one person who is known as Abdul Manaf. And this Abdul Manaf is the great grandfather of Prophet Muhammad. Abdul Manaf is the great grandfather of Prophet Muhammad. And this Abdul Manaf has Abu Shams and Banu Hashim has Abu Shams and Hashim. So the children of Hashim, 
and the children of Abishams are on each other's neck. Now these are the front liners of the confusion among the Quraysh. So most of them were trying to exploit other clans of the Quraysh to their side. They want to win other clans of the Quraysh to their side. So the main confusion in the year 580 to 590 AD is between Banu Hashim and Banu Abushams and these two people has the same grandfather who is Abdul Manaf. Who is Abdul Manaf? The great great grandfather of Prophet Muhammad. The next video is going to talk about Abdul Manaf. And let me tell you, the name Abdul Manaf Manaf is the Manaf, the bosom, the deity, bosom Manaf. That is the Manaf. And this great grandfather of Prophet Muhammad has named has been named after that bosom. Yet the bosom ni be an to great grandfather of Prophet Muhammad, who is Abu Manaf. And the reason for that will be explained to you in the next video. This is getting interesting, right? Yes. If it is getting interesting, let me see it in the comment section. I thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. The restriction is still on me. That's why I can't comment. I cannot comment. I can only like your comment because sometimes I reply some of your comment. It I learn with eight to nine days and I'll be done. The restriction will go. So I greet you all. And we'll meet again. I say to you, when the realities of life are uncovered, change is a must. Bye-bye.